Hello viewers, welcome to Health Watch and Anglican Cable Network Nigeria. I am Angela Mweze. A World Health Organization survey of 33 countries has shown that most adults in Africa have at least one risk factor increasing their chance of developing deadly lifestyle diseases such as heart disease, cancer and diabetes. The report shows that some 4 million people will die from non-communicable disease in Africa by 2020 and the figure will surpass those of infectious diseases by 2030. We are presently struggling to win the war against infectious diseases like malaria and cholera. Meanwhile, a bigger problem awaits us. On the program today, we shall discuss lifestyle and diseases. And my guest is Dr. Agnes Felix Udu. She's a consultant physician, a gastroenterologist at National Hospital Abuja. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very it's much. It's good to finally have you on this program after a long It's work. good to be here. Thank you. So we want to talk of, look at um, lifestyle diseases holistically. When we talk of lifestyle diseases, what, how do we just give a, a, a discussion, a description of what they are? Okay. okay, basically, when we talk of lifestyle diseases, we talk of um, those diseases that arise as a result of the choices we make on how we live our lives daily. Mm -hmm. These include um, the things we eat, um, whether we decide to sit in one place or be active, mm -hmm. the uh, extracurricular activities we engage in, mm -hmm. all these have an influence in the life, in the diseases which come up in a person's life. Okay. You know, so a lot of people um, initially were not thinking in that direction. But if you notice now, the trend is towards what can you do as a person? How can you live your life to make yourself healthier? Okay. Because a lot of the diseases are linked to your life choices mm -hmm. in how you okay. live your life. Makes so what examples of these diseases? I know so the examples... Heart, there's a heart disease, I know the one of them. <laughs> yes, examples of these diseases, these include obesity, mm -hmm. diabetes, um, hypertension. Mm -hmm. And then I always like to stretch it a bit because if you say lifestyle, you are talking of also your um, extracurricular activities. What do you do for curriculum? Mm -hmm. If you go every evening and drink, definitely you are inviting um, liver disease. Mm -hmm. If you go every, if you, if you, if you are someone who engages in um, uh, unprotected sexual intercourse, definitely you are inviting other forms of diseases which, well, are not generally classed under lifestyle diseases. Mm -hmm. But I think the whole thing now is more centered on how can you live your life to make yourself healthier. Cool. And we should also think about these diseases because when you live a, a lifestyle that is holistic mm -hmm. and is um, straightforward you then you can prevent all these other diseases okay so you know normally when you think of it you think it's just what you eat but actually your social activities yes your social actually, activities you know, can de it, yes, yes. De determine the kind of diseases that you end up um, getting as you go on in life well wow. that's good to know so just for the viewers to know that when we talk of lifestyle don't just think it's exercise and eating there's also the part of you know the multiple like for, you talked about the multiple partners yeah you know when people yes. go into you know sexual so habits. no matter how much you do your exercise and your diet and then you have multiple sexual partners mm. you are at risk of having some other diseases mm -hmm. which um which could actually end up being the ones to kill you, kill you exactly. and not the obesity <laughs> hypertension diabetes which in, in all sincerity does that's very good to prevent mm -hmm. but i just think we should look a bit more Mm -hmm. at our life choices apart from dieting and exercise. exercising okay now let's start with um, um okay first of all before i even go to the next question cancer would you put it in the lifestyle you know is it does it have anything to do with your lifestyle choices you know the cancer that's becoming well, yeah, prevalent it, it's, it's been it's been found that um a lot of cancers number one mm -hmm. are linked to uh for instance, sexual practices. Okay, that's the a lot of cervical. Yes, cervical, cervical cancer, cancer yes. is linked to sexual practices. Um, uh, a lot of cancers are linked to processed foods, canned foods, and all, the, and the eating of more processed foods mm -hmm. have been linked with having cancers. So yes, they can come in in your lifestyle choices okay. and determine um, disease in the patient. Okay, let, let's, let's talk about uh, um, food first before we go to exercise and then we'll go into what kind of food put us at risk to some of this lifestyle disease? If you, you know, there are so many of them, 
but whichever one, maybe let's do hypertension and diabetes. What kind of foods, you know, put us in trouble in harm's way for these um, um, diseases that we're talking about? Well, when you're talking about food, the important thing to know is that moderation is okay. key. Okay. Because the truth is, even if I say, okay, um, this is healthy to eat, mm -hmm. if you overdo it, there's going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. If I say protein is healthy to eat, yeah. we know that excess intake of excess protein can lead to kidney disease. Mm. So you have to have moderation at the back of your mind. Having said that, each um, class of food like we're taught in school, mm -hmm. primary school, secondary school, fats, Carbo protein, carbohydrates, yes. they all have a play, a part to play in a healthy individual. So you have to know which proportions they have to be taking. Mm -hmm. Having said that, within those classes of foods, there are some types of that class that are less, um, are more, we like to say, prone to disease, to causing okay. disease yeah. than the other mm -hmm. when you take in excess. Okay. For instance, a, um, when you talk of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. okay, so you talk of things like uh, the processed sugars, which okay. are more, which would are more implicated, mm -hmm, okay, the... than taking a whole grain, okay, food, food, okay, okay which is healthier. So number one mm -hmm. is sugar. We're talking about sugar because so many there's been so much about in the new, so much information saying stay away from sugar. Sugar is a problem. It's the leading. Well, I don't know if that's the cause of diabetes per se, but there's always this talk of stay away from sugar, sugar, sugar. Do we just pick sugar to our diet? <laughs> well, the truth is that a lot of these diseases also have a genetic component. Okay. Because someone has to be prone to having a disease. Okay. Okay, for it to have an effect. That's why you see some people they take sugar a lot and they never get diabetes yeah that's another one some, yes, people, some people don't take sugar and they have diabetes okay, okay. so there's a genetic component mm -hmm. but however the, the foods you eat will also help in the control mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. such uh, so if you have a person who's genetically um, predisposed to having um, type 2 diabetes for instance if a strong family history mother has father has and is aware of it so from the onset the person is, is the person is going to try and curb carbohydrates, refined sugars, okay, mm -hmm. as it goes along, and so that will go a long way to help the person. Yes, yeah. to help the person to prevent um, diabetes. Also, the truth, the, the thing is, a lot of times, all these excess carbohydrates and sugars they increase weight gain, mm -hmm. and with weight gain, the patient's um, body, the person's body is unable to utilize insulin, which helps to process. And the sugar. Um, the sugar. Mm -hmm. So you can have weight gain leading to a cause of diabetes. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why you find in some people, if they lose a lot of weight, they, they do not need drugs, drugs for their again, diabetes anymore. Okay. Okay, so, so that's one of the, the things that can happen mm -hmm. if you, if with increasing weight gain. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's look at um, 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 children. Let's look at children because I'm, we're beginning to hear that there are young kids, you know, that are you know, becoming victims of things like diabetes at young age, especially type 2 diabetes, because of course type 1 is juvenile, it starts from childhood. But for children, what's happening to our diet that our kids are, because I don't think it used to happen in the past like that, so here kids, you know, coming down with diabetes, what is happening to our diet that, or what do you think it could be responsible for this? Yeah, the truth is that, um, you know, with westernization, we are adopting some of those diets that we were not, you know, used to. Okay. Initially, growing up, most of your things were fresh. Yes. You eat fresh yes. fruits. Yes. You eat, uh, I, can't, I can't remember how many times I would eat um, burger or... <laughs> yeah, it's true. But no, all those things are everywhere. Yeah. Parents are busy. So there's a tendency for parents to just get the next thing, give the child to eat. Mm -hmm. And this also cause problems for the child because the child develops obesity. Mm -hmm. So there's also a rise in childhood obesity. Just the way we are seeing a rise in obesity genera generally, mm -hmm. there's also a rise in childhood obesity. And with the obesity, it also comes with these antecedent problems. Mm. So that is why it seems like, okay, initially we felt oh, type 2 diabetes in adults, but you have obese, morbidly obese children. And these children also are prone to having um, diabetes and other complications. Yeah, and that has a lot to do with what they're eating. A lot to do with what they're mm -hmm. eating, yeah. and children I play video games now. They don't they do don't exercise. Play. Because as a kid, you, I know you, you had to play every evening. You know, in the evening, you had to run around. Yes, run you around. had to play exactly. something. So know, a active. lot of people now, 
they live in high-rise buildings, they just stay indoors, play video games, watch television. You know, that running around, that activity mm. is really not there anymore. Mm. Mm. And this is, is really important because an obese child is most likely to be an obese adult. Wow. And yeah. it's going to carry on all the problems that are associated with it. Mm -hmm. And the problems you see in adults who are obese can also be seen in children. Mm. So these things are things that have to be cultured into the child from, uh, from the onset. Right. Mm. So what, okay, just as it should be put into the child, but how do mothers, which, I mean, not only mothers, I mean fathers as well, you know, how do they then start helping their kids to not get into obesity? And, well, we look at those before the obesity. What should mothers be looking out for, for the children? Let's start from the children, they'll move to adults. Yeah, but the important thing is the, the, the adults, the mothers, the parents themselves mm -hmm. have to be aware that this is bad for the child, okay? And then they have to, it has a conscious effort Okay, mm -hmm. so if you are giving your child um, food to school, if you are putting a snack, make sure the snack is a fruit. Okay, fruits in place of all the yes, biscuits of and candy sugary, and, and all that. You make sure you have fruits. Make sure the child dies in fruit, in balls fruit. Make sure the child has an avenue to play. Do some form of exercise. They're sure doing that. Well, when they go to school during the school term, they probably run around in school. In school yeah. But when they come home for holidays, don't make them sit indoors throughout. Mm -hmm. Engage them in some sport. I have a friend whose um, daughter was actually obese. Oh. She was uh, 10 years old and she was Ten. obese. Yes. And what she did, she cut out no Coke, no Fanta. Mm -hmm. She just, if she wants to drink fresh fruit juice. Mm -hmm. And then she enrolled her in, in tennis. And she lost the weight. Wow. She lost the weight. Okay. So you look at it and say, oh, it's baby fat. Some people say, oh, it's baby fat. Yeah, that's one deception. Fat. People say, oh, baby fat, they will grow up and they lose they it. They won't, lose, they won't lose it. If there's no conscious effort to lose it, they won't lose it. Yeah, and sometimes you see mothers say, oh, that fat is what the baby, the child will use to grow. And you're wondering, is it possible for no. the Even height? for infants. What you are saying, mainly a lot of people do it for infants. Mm -hmm. They'll tell you, oh, they, yeah, they will, they will use the fat and grow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you have a morbidly obese infant. Yes. No, that's not good for the child. So from, from, it has to be a conscious effort to ensure that kids are eating the right food, food yeah. and they're actually moving around and not staying Anyone sedentary and not doing anything. Okay, let's cross over. Now the child is obese. I don't know how you, okay, of course you change the lifestyle of the yes, child, you know, like uh, enrolling in tennis, like you said. Okay, let's look at adults. Adults who, who are, you know, tending to us, or when do they even start knowing that they're obese? You know, when do you start knowing that obesity is setting in? Well, the truth is that you can't, you might not really can say by just, by looking at someone, someone who is really obese, you mm -hmm. would know the person is obese. Okay. But the problem usually is that gray area when people are overweight okay. and not necessarily obese. obese okay. Okay. Yeah. So there's usually that great period where the person is not slim, the person is not fat, mm -hmm. and so the person is just right, whereas the person is actually a bit overweight. So usually what you do is you, you, you have to look at the weight in relation to the height. Okay. Okay. Because if someone who is six feet and someone who is four feet can't weigh the same thing because the bone yeah, mass of the six feet. Are. So there's what we call the body mass index. Okay. So you're supposed to measure your weight and your height and there's a calculation. Mm -hmm. You put your weight over your height squared, the square okay. of your height. Okay. Okay. The and height is a centimeter. In the, the height in here, here meters. We use meters. Okay. Yes, yes, the height meters, is meters. Yes. Okay. And the weight in kilograms. Okay. 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 So when you do your weight over height squared, the figure you get, depending on what you get, it helps you to tell if you're normal weight or you're overweight. Normal weight should be between 18.9 mm -hmm. to 24.9. Okay, that's so, normal. Yes. So okay. if, you, if you fall, if you do that calculation and you fall within there, then you are normal weight. Okay. But if you fall before between 24.9 and 29.9 is overweight. Okay. Or 25 to 24, 24 is overweight. Yeah. So if you fall within so, 25, 26, 27, and you're running within that, then yes, you are, in you that are, you are getting, like you you're moving. Exactly. Okay. So, and usually that's the period where you want to do something. Yes, that's Because usually working. by the time you get to the obese, it's a lot more difficult to push yourself yeah. back. Yeah. You have, it takes a lot of willpower, a lot of determination mm -hmm. to exercise, to eat right, and bring down the weight. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's good for people to, um, what they call it, to know this. So you can so you're not just standing on the scale and saying, No, I'm not too big, I'm I weigh this. Yes. Yeah. You mm -hmm. have to calculate it in relation to your height. And okay. then that would help you to that. Another important thing is abdominal 
um, fats. fats. Okay. Some people, are, the body mass index might not be high, but they have big stomachs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the big stomachs are more linked with hypertension and diabetes and cholesterol issues. Okay, we'll hold you on that thought. We'll just go on a quick break. When we return, we'll talk more on cholesterol, diabetes, and the fats around the stomach area. We'll be right back to you. Let's don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Before we went on the break, we were discussing lifestyle and disease, and our guest is still Dr. Agnes Felix Udu. Thank you very much, ma. Thank so you. just before we went on the break, we were talking about cholesterol. You know, we're talking about fats fat. around abdominal the, the, the fat, abdominal yeah. fats and cholesterol. So just carry on with that. Yeah, discussing. so basically the thing is it's, a lot of studies have gone into this, mm -hmm. and they found that the, the main problem is the abdominal fat. Okay. So you could have someone who perhaps has a normal BMI, mm -hmm. but has big, t by big abdomen, a lot of fat in the abdomen, that person is still predisposed to having those um, diseases, mm -hmm. okay? So um, fat in the abdominal wall has been linked more with a lot of insulin resistance, um, hypertension, cholesterol, mm. diabetes, a lot of studies, even um, fat in the liver too, called fatty liver, okay. is also something that occurs with obesity, hypertension, mm. diabetes, and um, high cholesterol. So it's also good to take the, the, the um, size of okay. the abdominal okay. girth, okay. Okay, to okay. be able to tell, okay, even though my, my BMI mm. is normal, do I have a protruding abdomen, which I have to work on? even if my BMI is normal. So some people are even saying the abdominal size might even be more significant than the BMI. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. But of course, generally the BMI still helps it's in overall um, weight control and um, weight monitoring, so okay. to speak. So if, you're, if your BMI is within the okay range, mm. you should also be mindful of the of fat. The fat in, in your abdomen. Is it only fats being stored in the abdominal? You, okay, you also talked about the liver and is, yeah. is it the liver no yeah the liver mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. been stored yeah. the, is this how it happens across board or there are some people because there's some people that eat so much and they just remain tiny and some yeah, people as I said, been stored inside yes so, as i said the law of genetics come into play yeah 
okay because you also um there's also a lot of things in the body telling the body okay store this fat don't store the fat burn it up as energy mm. so and that's genetics that's the makeup of the person, person. Okay. okay okay so you, you sometimes you can't um do anything about that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay some people do not store fat as much as some people do know. what then happens is that those who store fat more have to work harder yeah, to keep it off okay so it's a it's the genetic um Okay, there are a lot of well, genes involved, which is involved, beyond, okay, the scope which is beyond the scope of, of this. Of, of, yes, but just know that it's genetic. Mm -hmm. Some people, their body tells them to store more than others. So those who do not, who store more, need to go, do a lot more to prevent it, reduce their eating and exercise to prevent storage of excess fat. Okay. Now, let's talk about cholesterol, because anytime um, hypertension is being mentioned, anytime you hear high blood pressure, there's always that word cholesterol what is this cholesterol that has put everybody in trouble so put people in trouble <laughs> cholesterol generally is, is fat is okay. a type of fat okay um so the thing is that um your body produces that some of that type of fat mm. some of cholesterol you get from eating okay so you can have a, someone who has high cholesterol again genetics has a lot to play with it okay you can have someone who has high cholesterol and um the person is dieting and all that and the cholesterol still doesn't go down to normal okay that's because the body also produces cholesterol apart from what you eat your body produces so if you are reducing what you eat and your body is producing too much it's still going to be high and you might need drugs to help okay, to, to help you reduce it okay? okay but some people by the time they go on a diet the cholesterol is able to come down to normal mm -hmm. okay so that's where diet also comes into play yeah because if you are eating um, unhealthily, mm -hmm. definitely you are eating more cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Definitely it's going to rise in your blood. So okay, this cholesterol then, are mainly from, okay, the one that we take from out inside from the food, mainly from oil, I think. Oil, from oil, from mm -hmm. generally fatty foods. Fatty foods yeah. and mm -hmm. all that. So that's where we get the cholesterol. But you have the ones that say it's free cholesterol. <laughs> That it, it you know cholesterol free you know there's the yeah of the truth is that there oil. are different types of cholesterol mm -hmm. that's just the truth of it there are different types so there are some types that are um, what's the word that are bad for the body okay okay so that's when they say cholesterol free okay do you understand and then there's cholesterol and then there are other types of fat fatty oh. acids okay, okay you know fatty acid chains okay okay, okay. No, so the, so that's why they, they say cholesterol free okay yeah. oh, so it's not necessary that the oil is that there's no oil in there's it. no cholesterol in the oil there's no oil, exactly there's no that particular so, type of okay the dangerous cholesterol is not in this oil so yes. they just assume it's safety but even if you're taking that one it should be done in moderation just exactly as, okay, it's still, so still going to increase because your body is going to take it in mm -hmm. and it's going to still going to process it. <laughs> so, so there are some people thinking that oh, when I take this oil, uh, it's it's cholesterol free. It's not. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, it's not that it doesn't work that way. Mm. You are going to have a less amount of okay going in. going in. Okay. Mm. What about palm oil? Palm mm. oil. You know, it's 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 solid at room tem temperature, and the the, the the trick is when food is solid, when oil is solid at room temperature, it becomes dangerous. <laughs> Well, so here's the thing about palm oil. A lot of research had been going on in palm oil. As a student, we were told palm oil had a lot of cholesterol, was high in cholesterol, but it also had a lot of um, vitamin, vitamin e, e, antioxidants, e, okay. carotenes, bitter yeah. carotenes, mm -hmm. which cancelled out the effect of the cholesterol. Okay. But recent studies have shown that that might not necessarily be so. Mm. So our palm oil is very high in cholesterol. Okay. Okay, and should be eaten in moderation. Moderation. Yeah. So those people that put it and pour it on their food and you know, yeah, they should be mindful of it. Mm -hmm. should be mindful. But if you, if you it does have all those things they said, the mm -hmm. vitamin A, the beta carotene, the vitamin E and antioxidant, it has those things. But it also has the cholesterol. But sometimes when we heat it to very high temperature, it damages the vitamins, isn't it? Because I know some people when they want to make some form of use it to cook mm, some form of food. Mm. They heat it up to very high temperature. Yeah, when you heat it up, it then it damages those good parts of it. They're not necessarily affecting the um, cholesterol, cholesterol levels within it. Okay, I, I was just going to talk a little bit on hepatitis. You know, and you know, there's always this conception that it has a linkage to oil. 
I don't know if you've ever <laughs> heard that anyway, but there's yeah. always that story of you're taking so much oil, hepatitis, there's hepatitis or but well, the thing is it's, it's there's a lot of um um poor education. People are not well educated okay. about health issues. And um when something becomes very topical, then you now have a lot of theories coming up. Yes. Um in recent times hepatitis has become yes, it's gaining a lot of yeah. um um, popularity, popularity. Yes. exactly. So, everybody is, so everybody's offering their own uh, theories on how to treat it or how you get it mm -hmm. and everything. So, well, in my practice, what I've learned, I've heard most is that okay, you have hepatitis, then you don't eat oil, you don't eat protein, and you know people are miserable when they come to me. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not true. The why they talk about the oil is because the liver is involved in producing um, bile acids, which help in digestion of fats but, mm. okay but it does not cause hepatitis and it's not necessary that because you have hepatitis you have to reduce intake of these products because the the only time when we restrict protein or, or any of those things is when the liver is already failing mm -hmm. or has been, been damaged to some degree a lot of people with hepatitis come to us without any symptoms their liver is apparently fine mm -hmm. and what we usually advise is just take a normal balanced diet okay don't overdo anything don't take alcohol, don't take herbs, mm. okay? So it's a wrong um, information that yes. uh, hepatitis causes oil. Okay, so oil, oil, oil is not the cause of it now. It's not so the cause of it. It's not the cause of it. It's more complex than, than yes. oil being uh, the, the, exactly. the cause. But it has a lot to do with the liver, you know, eventually the hepatitis itself. Yes, yes. Mm. The main target of the virus, of the hepatitis virus, is the liver. Okay. Okay, and I said liver produces substances involving uh, fat digestion, but that does not mean that it needs to be restricted in all patients okay. who have hepatitis. Okay, let's look at the dangers of alcohol. You know, you just mentioned alcohol. Alcohol, you know, you even see it everywhere that it's dangerous, but it seems to be on the rise. The consumption of alcohol seems to be on the rise. So we just want to put it out there, the consequences of alcohol, especially with this lifestyle you know, change that we are looking at. What are the consequences of alcohol, especially with the lifestyle change we're looking at? Yeah, so alcohol, um, very bad substance, very <laughs> nice substance, still very bad substance. <laughs> yes, yes. Okay, because the truth is that alcohol tends to affect a lot of the uh, body systems, mm -hmm. not just um, the brain, the liver, okay, the pancreas, you know, a lot of body systems are affected by the the alcohol and what usually happens is that one of the main the um, two common complications that we see generally mm -hmm. are one the complications with the liver mm -hmm. and complications with the brain the brain yes so okay. in among alcoholics a lot of them have um, um, brain damage so you see when you're a, a chronic alcoholic that can't walk straight mm -hmm. when okay yeah, okay it's yes, actually okay. because yes. their brain has okay. been damaged from the alcohol Wow. They forget easily, mm -hmm. they can't concentrate, they, their speech is, yeah, is slurred. slurred. <laughs> yeah, and so you see amongst them, they really have that um, problem. And it's actually because their brain has been damaged. Wow. And then the, the other common complication we have is with the liver. Hmm. Okay, we'll, we have what we call alcoholic hepatitis. We have okay. alcoholic fatty liver disease, hmm. alcoholic cirrhosis. So it causes a lot of um, damage to the liver mm -hmm. because mainly the liver is the one who's that's going to uh, metabolize so yes, to speak okay. break it down mm -hmm. and so make it ready for excretion yeah so when that happens you have a lot of issues some byproducts of the mm -hmm. alcohol damaging the liver and this happens over time yeah so a lot of people don't know you know they, they over time the, the, this damage happens and then another thing people don't know is people who binge drink okay. we have binge drinkers they don't drink every day. Okay, they drink once in a while. But they drink, and when they drink, they, <laughs> they, drink like they drink to stupor. Yeah. Okay? Those people are at greater risk than someone who drinks probably moderately. moderately. You, you understand? Consistently. Mm -hmm. than people who, Because at that point, they are loading their liver with all those toxins yeah. that are coming out of the breakdown of alcohol. Yeah. So alcohol is not something that... Um, it's something we should advise patients about generally yeah, in the lifestyle yeah. that's one because you see it all the time they've been talking about alcohol and then smoking is another one smoking is another dangerous one i know it it damages the lungs more 
or yeah, the jugular? Yes, smoking damages the lungs. Mm. That's the main um, area of the person. Yes, it, because it works, so. obviously you are inhaling, inhaling these it. toxic substances and has been linked to um, lung cancer. Lung cancer. Okay, mm. lung cancer, then some other diseases we call um, um, bronchiectasis, mm. uh, bronchitis, okay, destruction of the lungs generally. Um, and of course, they also have predisposition to other infections once the lungs have been destroyed mm. and all that. So it's, um, I think a lot has been done about trying to dissuade cigarette smoking, smoking. so to speak. Uh, maybe more than alcohol. Mm -hmm. Be, uh, yeah, because... Um, but sometimes it doesn't look like it's people are... Okay, I, I don't know. I don't, have, I don't have statistics to the number of people that are stopping or mm. I don't know how it's working out. Well, I think there's been a reduction. Okay. Or well, perhaps people don't openly smoke as it was in the past. past okay. Okay, but I would like to believe that there's a reduction in the number of um, people actually and then perhaps mainly just experimental by okay. youths. <laughs> Alright, then one other thing just before we go on the break. Um, all this herbal medicine that people are taking now, you see it on the road, a young lady is carrying it and she mixes some things in a glass and gives the person and he drinks and the story is normally oh after drinking it i feel so good it gives me quick energy i think they call it abo here or something like that how what what do we say to that because I, it, it looks like something that was happening in the past mm. that stopped us Stop. sometime and then now is resurfacing because people feel the orthodox you know way is maybe a little bit expensive mm. or they don't believe in it anymore so they feel i'll tell you why it's resurfacing Okay, you know, we in Africa, we follow the trends mm -hmm. abroad. So the trend initially was, oh, abroad, they don't take herbal medicine, they take, you know, mm. processed medicines, and so we all followed it. And then some people came about and said, okay, no, natural products are very good. This or that. And so we went ahead and dug up our uh, own natural, natural products. products. Said, okay, yeah. well, and so people patronize them more mm -hmm. because we've been made to believe that, okay, um, these herbs, they are natural products, they don't cause any harm, mm. okay? In, in all sincerity, some of these herbs might have some qualities that are, um, that may be favorable. Yeah. But the problem is that they are not purified. Yeah, and they come with lots come of... With, uh, yes, other other things, the way they are prepared, the plants themselves, because plants are, are um, substances can be very heavy, so mm -hmm. to speak, mm -hmm. yeah. for the body to break down. Break down. Okay, and so you take all these things in, and it tends to cause um, problems. Mainly, the problems it causes are kidney and liver failure. Yeah, from the use of herbs. Because I was listening, I heard a doctor say the other day that they are, you know, they are having so much issues with the kidney. You know, the, the people's kidneys are failing these days. It could yeah, attribute it to some yes, of these things. Yes, it's, it's contributory. Okay. Even some of the more common things like moringa and green tea, mm -hmm. we've actually had some mm. patients come. Yes. Some patients wow. coming with some um, liver and kidney problems from this drug. The important thing is, is because there's no way to standardize oh, yes, what is taken. Like I always thing. tell my my patients who say, "Oh, they took moringa." And I said, "How much moringa? Well, how did you take your moringa? Oh, the leaves are powdered. Do you know how many leaves, dry leaves, it would take you to powder to make a teaspoon? Hmm. It's a lot of leaves hmm. because by the time they crumble, they, they become very small. Small, yeah. And then you, so you don't know. You just Pack it and just drink. Start drinking. Okay, and that causes problems. So it's um, it's something we try to discuss with our patients, patients. And so as we go along, and then especially for our patients who already have some form of liver problem like hepatitis, we advise them totally to abstain to from, from alcohol or herbs. Okay, all right. We'll go on a quick break. When we come back, we'll look at the last final segment of this program. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back, viewers, for the final segment of this program.
Welcome back viewers. Before we went on the break, we were still discussing lifestyle and diseases. And my guest is still Dr. Agnes Felix Odu. All right. So we're discussing now. Let's look at um, exercise. Exercise. You know, we, initially we talked about how, you know, people are living more sedentary lives. But how does exercise, you know, have positive impact, a positive impact on the body? Exercise. Itself. Okay, so exercise is, is very important. Mm -hmm. um, exercise touches every part of your body um, in little ways or, or the other. Now, a lot of people, because they're slim, think they don't need to exercise. Now, because if I'm walking, if I'm jogging and I see somebody who's slim and she's really running, I'm like, what do you, why, why are you running? Yeah, that's <laughs> jogging we, we, we always think <laughs> that you only need exercise when you're obese. Yeah. You only need exercise to lose weight. But there are also other benefits of exercise that goes beyond just losing weight, okay? Um, so exercise, and exercise touches every part of your body. Um, exercise touches your blood vessels. When you exercise, it relaxes your blood vessels. So it's also good for people with um, high blood pressure. Okay. It relaxes the blood vessels and reduces the pressure within them. Okay. It makes you pass more salt in your urine, which also helps to reduce the blood pressure. Um, when you exercise? Yes. Wow. Then when you exercise, it increases your heart rate, makes your heart stronger. Okay. So you can withstand um, more, uh, what they call cardiorespiratory endurance. Your heart and your lungs get stronger. So it's, you, have, you can end, endure more distances of walking and all that. So you don't climb a flight of stairs at work and you're panting, panting okay. at the end. So it also makes your heart and your lungs stronger. It also make, makes your, your gut, your intestines move freely. So if you are oh, someone who has true. constipation... that's true. I think I've noticed that. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> if you are someone who has constipation correct. and you are always sitting down, if you engage in exercise, you would find that it, it actually helps it. Yeah, yeah, so, it yeah. also, so you can see that it helps a lot of things. Yes, yes, okay? it does. And then it also helps with glucose utilization. So it also helps people with, high, with diabetes to reduce their sugar. It also helps, enhances the body's ability to break down sugar, insulin sensitivity and all that. So there is a lot of things that, can, that you can gain mm -hmm. from um, exercise. Exactly. So we also, they also say exercise reduces what we call the feel-good hormones, the endorphins. So okay. at the end of exercise, you actually feel emotionally better. Mm. Okay, you are more elated. You feel oh, that's a true. General yeah, sense of well-being well -being. Yes. is yes, achieved yes. by exercise. So, when is best to exercise? In the morning or evening, or whichever one pleases you? Because at in the evening, you want to just rest. <laughs> no, well, it depends on 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 the, the patient. Depends on the person okay. when you have time. Yeah. you can exercise in the morning, first thing before you go to work. If it's if that is what's convenient for you, mm -hmm. it tends to give you a how like a early morning boost. Yeah, to start your when you do it in yeah. the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can also do it in the evenings if it's not um, easy for you to do in the morning. Mm -hmm. there, there's really nothing wrong with that. Okay, and then um, um, yes, we're going to talk about diabetes. I sort of know um, obesity, obesity, and how to the diet to take to reduce. You know, especially when somebody notices that they are becoming overweight and then getting into that 28, 29 or BMI, you know, what kind of diets would somebody be advised to get involved in? Because I know there are lots of them hanging all over the place. Some of them you have to starve, some of them have to take a particular nutrient from you. Here's the truth of the matter. If you follow normal balanced diet that we're taught in school, mm -hmm. okay, and then reducing carbohydrate and fats, okay, and you exercise, you will actually lose weight. Okay. But the problem is that a lot, a, a lot of times people find it difficult because that, that way it takes more discipline mm -hmm. and the weight loss is not rapid. That's when you're so, obese. When you're obese now, yes, it takes more so, time. Yes. Yeah, so you have to, it's something that is a long-term program. Oh, right. But a lot of people want something rapid. But the idea is that they want something rapid and then later maintain it, mm -hmm. okay? So, and that's why you have a lot of these diet fads coming up. Because, but I noticed that a lot of these diet fads cannot be sustained, cannot be a lifestyle. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's just for that, and I personally don't even advise some of these diet fads to be taken as a lifestyle. This is what I'm mm. going to do forever. Yes. What is a lifestyle is a normal balanced diet, reduce carbohydrates, reduce fat, mm -hmm. reduce salt, increase vegetables, increase fruits, exercise. 
your weight will be maintained. Okay, so you want to reduce carbohydrates. But, you know, bef you know, like I remember my grandmother or my great-grandmother, I met my great-grandmother and even at her old age, she was still very strong. And you find that they eat a lot of some carbohydrate, roots carbohydrate, like the yams and the, you know, the soup. Their main food was cassava meal. They took a lot of that and they never really gained so much, so much weight, weight and they lived so long. I mean, at 90, I think she was still eating meat and her teeth were so strong and I was wondering, what kind of old woman is this? Yeah, so you see that and they were eating this, but what, what's different now? They were eating that. They were not being chauffeured to and through. Yeah, they walked. They walked. <laughs> yes, yes. They farmed. Mm -hmm. They weren't eating meat pie, coke, burger. All of that. Thing. Most of the carbohydrates they ate were complex carbohydrates. Okay, not refined products. Oh, okay. So these also have a, an, an effect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if um, Mama ate um, semo in the morning, and then she has, by the end of the day, she has walked five kilometers. Mm -hmm. so because it's all gone. It's all gone. It's all gone, yeah. Do you understand? So you have to also keep that in mind because it's, 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 an, it's an addition of everything. Okay. So if you know you're not going to be that active every day, you can't afford to eat like that. Okay. You have to cut it down. We're always driving around now. We don't eat Yeah, much. we don't, we don't, we we don't exercise anymore. You have to go don't. down the road to buy something. You go enter your car and you drive. Hmm. Whereas you go stroll. So I usually advise my patients that if you find it difficult having scheduled exercise, then try and see what you can do to just increase your movement. If you work where there's a lift, don't take the lift, take the okay, stairs. If you have a, a maid and you want to buy something down the road, don't send the maid, go yourself, mm -hmm. stroll down the road. You know, those small things that might not really, you know, add up, in your mind, mm -hmm. might not add up to something, but in reality, do add up mm, to something. Add up something. Okay, that's good. So we should focus more on complex carbohydrates if we're going to, like, like our mothers used to do, mm. the yam and all that, and take out more of the refined, take away the refined, refined. Mm. Um, should, the, the refined, refined carbohydrates and all of that mm. and then we'll be good to go okay so let's talk about the the we're still talking on diet mm -hmm. there's this popular diet that's going on now which is the keto keto, keto diet i think it's ketogenic diet ketogenic, diet, ketogenic yeah. diet where you take heightened fats and then you cut out all the other food you know reduce protein almost no thing of carbohydrates in your diet is that a good way to go about it? Well, the, the ketogenic diet was a diet that was developed for something else, a neurological disease, mm -hmm. and they noticed that the patient placed on diet were losing weight. So it was a side effect of the diet to cure something. Okay. Anyway, that's how it came oh, about. That's how, oh, wow. Yeah, the ketogenic diet. Um, so basically, as you said, you take a lot of fats, cut out carbohydrates, mm. take some protein, and the idea is to trick the body into breaking down fats. Okay, stored fats. Yes. Okay. So the body just sees fat and then it switches from utilization of glucose because there's no glucose to utilize mm -hmm. and switches to utilization of fat. So it breaks down the fat. Well, a lot of people have been on the diet. Some people have been unable to tolerate the diet because there are a lot of some side effects that come with the diet mm -hmm. which um, have been intolerable in some people. Uh, but for those who have been able to continue with the diet, it's okay, but as I said, it might not be profitable to do it as a lifestyle. Okay. So what I, I usually advise my patient, if you must do a keto diet, have a target. Okay. You have the weight target. When you get to that target, the truth is that if you're eating a balanced diet and you're exercising, you won't gain weight on that. On that okay, then. when you... Yes. So you could use it as a means of reducing weight mm -hmm. to a particular size. Mm -hmm. And then the truth is that the best diet for you is a balanced diet. Balanced diet. diet. And then what of the, the eight kin? I think eight kin is heightened protein. Protein. Yeah, actually, Atkins have been thrown out mm. because they found some people coming down with kidney disease with, because of the high protein. Oh, of course, case. of course. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the idea is that protein, when they're taking protein, protein is, um, requires more energy to break down. Okay. So if you're eating more of protein, you are going to use more energy to break down the protein. And the energy you get from protein is small compared with carbohydrates or fats. 
Hmm. So in the end, if you use, let's say, um, 10 kilojoules to break down a gram of protein, and then you only get 2 kilojoule energy from, it, from that, then it's so it's deficient. a negative deficit, yes, so you yes. lose weight. So that was the concept, the, of, yes, the concept okay. of the diet. Yeah, okay. But as I said earlier on, high protein diet is linked with liver kidney disease because, again, the kidney has to um, filter out your, your breakdown of protein. Wow. So, <laughs> There's so many so things. So the, the Atkins diet had lost favor because of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the important thing is, is, as I said, a balanced diet and exercise. And sometimes it might not be profitable to rush into some diet fads. Okay. Today it's keto, tomorrow it might be something. Yeah, it's always okay. rain. It comes in yes, season. Yeah. After some time, there's somebody, somebody is somebody thinking all over the place. But imagine those people who, who, who rush to do the Atkins and develop problems with it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's something not very, not very pleasing. Okay, there's another one that is all over the place. I think it's, um, I don't want to call the name of any... Um, any of these, they, they normally do multi-level marketing with them. You know, you have all these. Yeah, I think I, I think I know. Yeah, you, they give you all the food, food yes, and yes. they I tell know, you to I, take yeah. all of these and you live longer or your skin will get mm -hmm. better or, mm -hmm. you know, there are herbal medicine that are coming from the, kind of from other parts of the world and all that. Is it advisable? Because every, it seems to be trending. It's trending now. Everybody is taking one supplement or one thing or the other. And there's this poisonous this poshness about it oh i take this oh no i don't take this you know and people it, it, what what do you have to say about that is it proper well it's it's really not advisable as i said because we love these herbal products even though they might have one or two effects it's like the green tea studies have shown it can help in weight loss mm -hmm. studies have shown that it has antioxidants mm -hmm. okay but i've had patients presenting to me with um, increasing their liver enzymes from green tea, and when they stopped the green tea, everything came back to normal. Wow. So, so because what you need to take for weight loss is um, more than what you would have taken if you are just taking it. Mm -hmm. You probably yeah, take a cup of green tea one every week or two every week. Mm -hmm. But if you are taking it for weight loss, you take two take to like three cups every day. day. Yes. So that you can run into problems with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the problem, the, the thing about these issues is that sometimes you might have um, ongoing. Um, damage to the organs which will not show immediately yeah. like the people who had increased liver enzymes from green tea, they were coming for something else and we when checked it was noticed. and we noticed, and said, okay are you taking anything, what are you taking, so I just take green tea okay stop the green tea, after 2-3 weeks let's repeat it and it's back to normal hmm. so, so but they didn't feel anything they didn't have any problems, so but when you have it like that, like that over years they might not have any problems until the damage is um and no done yes is, is well. so you might say oh i've been taking this thing for for three four years i don't have any issues why is the doctor telling me that hmm. it might not show immediately yeah i know it, the, the thing about this you know changing diets and all that it's actually simple just as you're saying you know just eat a balanced diet exercise and i, th I think my sister who she, she she struggled with doing different diets for a while and she's tried all manner of diets Every day she's bringing one new diet or there. But recently she just started eating healthy, more vegetable, and exercising every morning. Mm -hmm. And she dropped, and my brother just drew her attention the other day. Oh, you see, when you were doing all those diets every day, oh my God, every day she buys one new one, is in the market and all that. So the rule of thumb is for people to be careful, you know, eat good meal, your healthy food, you know, vegetables are take, isn't it? More vegetables, more vegetables, more fruits. fruits. Less Can you take excess of it where it becomes dangerous at any point? Excess of vegetable and fruits. I hear people say you gain weight by taking too much. Yeah, fruits. but you see, the thing is that they, they still contain some of these things. So if you take an excess of it, mm. you might still um, because, for instance, now if you're taking fruits, you're still going to eat your normal meals. Yeah, you're not counting the fruit as a meal. Yeah. Okay. But it so has a lot of. So you take your meal. And then you say, oh, it's fruits. Mm -hmm. And you pack it and pack it and pack it and pack it. Then it becomes dangerous. It still add, that adds up. <laughs> okay. Let so that's why initially, you know, the first thing I said, I said moderation. Yes, is the key. Is moderation the key. is the key. Okay. Just before we go, fizzy drinks. The fizzy drinks. Because mm. I, I, I was reading an article once, and it says um, a particular drink, which is very popular, should have, should have the same... Um, label on cigarettes, mm. you know, that you're liable to die early. 
<laughs> if you take this, I saw it. It's a UK magazine that you know put that as the you know the the caption for uh, for the news. How dangerous are these fizzy drinks that we have all over the place? Um, the truth is that number one, fizzy drinks contain a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. I mean, sugar that you normally won't sit down and uh, okay, like the, a lot of typical drinks, we contain about. Uh, averaging about eight cubes of sugar. Which you can't even put in a glass of exactly. your normal, regular beverage. Uh, which you wouldn't do. But you would sit down and drink it. After so eating gari <laughs> and or eba. So you have or a, a lot of processed sugar going into your body. That's number one. Number two, there are a lot of other substances that are put, uh, used to process of, or the drinks, which some people have raised um, uh, issues about that mm. could be cast carcinogenic that's cancer causing mm. they could lead to kidney issues yeah. so that's why a lot of people are putting up this um, uh, well, um, awareness about it there's a particular case that I, I heard about a, a group of people who tried to import a, a fizzy drink from mm. here out of the country and it was returned because a particular substance was above Okay, the, the normal yes, the, the normal is for the body acceptable, yeah. for by the body. So these these things are, are are not typically very good for your body. That's mm. just the truth about it. We drink them a lot. It's very easy. We are driving the access to yes, just pick yeah, one. Pick, but it actually, if you really really want to be sincere, those things are not good for your body. Mm. It's better you have um, a fruit juice. Mm -hmm. Or whole fruits. Whole fruits, yes. Or water, better still. Better. <laughs> or water, water better still. Better still. <laughs> and then the juice itself, the other juice, you know, the, the ones the that... Can, the, yeah, some of them, they also add other things. Yeah. So it's, it's not fresh. It's not fresh. So not the fresh. best is just do your but fresh. But the good thing is that with the, with the, with the, with the onset of these um, uh, herbal things, there also comes the smoothie smoothie yes. habit okay so every yeah yeah every every have someone you doing some, yes. smoothie mm -hmm. someone doing fresh juice someone doing it those are good things that we should embrace yeah really. so it's mm -hmm. advisable to start to go natural Na more, yes, more natural. than let's go back to what we used to do back in the days you know exercise more it's more of you know if possible complex sugars as opposed to be as opposed to the quick ones that you know you just take quickly and mm. you know it makes you happy and a few minutes you're down there so it's so it's advisable to take a balanced diet if we're going to take anything from the discussion today balanced diet stay away from fizzy drinks, drinks and then um, exercise. exercise very important exercise exercise even if you're not obese even if you're not obese <laughs> yeah so don't assume so when you see somebody running and the person is very slim it's not the person just wants to be slim but the person needs to maintain something beautiful in their body all right so that's what we're going out with today so from lifestyle to avoid these diseases that come up you change your lifestyle eat the right food exercise and throw away so many things that are not good that's good conclusion <laughs> all right thank you very much for You're coming welcome. on the program for the past um 40 minutes or so i've been speaking with dr agnes felix Udu. she has taken us round on how to prevent diseases that come as a result of your lifestyle change. Well, I'll see you next week. Thank you very much for joining us. I am Angela Mweze. Goodbye. God bless you. <laughs>